Welcome physics students to today's video on velocity time graphs. Before we get into today's video, I would recommend the following viewing. I will place this link uh, in the comment section of this YouTube video. It's looking at position time graphs, a good starting point if you haven't already watched this video. So let's go into our scenarios. What I'm going to present is a motion graph and trying to visualize the motion um, in the scenario of a car moving between two traffic lights with some speed limits. So I want to keep in mind that in real life, this vehicle would move continuously. However, we're going to stop and freeze frame several sections. So stage one, the car accelerates from a velocity of zero to 20 meters per second north over a time of five seconds at a constant rate. So there goes our vehicle. It goes from zero and accelerates up to 20 meters per second in a northerly direction, which is represented on our graph with the red line. Stage two, the car maintains a constant velocity of 20 meters per second north for the next five seconds. And there's our graph. Stage three, the car decelerates from a velocity of 20 meters per second north to zero meters per second over the next five seconds at a constant rate. We'll see our car slow down to the traffic lights. Stage four, the car accelerates from a velocity of zero to 20 meters per second south over the next five seconds at a constant rate. Now we have been traveling north to the right, we're now gonna travel south, which means back to the left, and we're accelerating, so we're gonna start slow and speed up. Stage five, the car maintains a constant velocity of 20 meters per second south for the next five seconds. So for the first five seconds, we see that there's a change in velocity. We've started at zero, and we've ended at a velocity of 20 meters per second in the northerly direction. So change of velocity is 20 meters per second. Took us five seconds. Now we want to work out the average acceleration. To work out the acceleration, we can look at this in terms of the gradient, the rise over run. So you can see in front of us at the moment on the screen that there's a rise for this first five seconds starting at zero. We've got a rise up to 20 meters per second north. And in terms of running, we've got a run in time from zero to five. To work out the acceleration of this car over the first five seconds, we divide the change in velocity by the change in time, which is really a rise over run. Now looking at our triangle up on the top right hand side, if we were to put a hand over acceleration, we see that it's, we see that it's equal to change in velocity over change in time. Let's do our calculation. That's 20 meters per second is our rise divided by five seconds, which gives us a gradient and an acceleration, an average acceleration of four meters per second per second, also written as four meters per second squared in the northerly direction. This is going upwards and everything upwards on this velocity time graph represents north. Next step is to work out the displacement. Now we use the gradient to work out the acceleration. The displacement is calculated by finding the area under the graph. And when we determine the area under a motion graph, we look at the area between the line and that of the X axis. So here we have our area for the first five seconds. It's a triangle, half base times height. So that can be calculated from a height starting at zero going to 20, so a height of 20, and a base starting at zero and going across to five. So the area ends up being a half base times height, and we end up with 50 meters. And of course, that green triangle is above the x-axis, so it's in the positive section, and we are heading, therefore, in the northerly direction. So that has a displacement of 50 meters north. Our description is that we've got a constant acceleration for the first five seconds. Our next five seconds, from five to 10, you can see the line on the graph. It has no change in velocity. It's not stationary. It's traveling constantly at 20 meters per second to the north. This occurs for five seconds. Now the gradient is rise over run, change in velocity over change in time. There is no change in velocity, so this represents an acceleration of zero meters per second per second. However, there is displacement. Whilst we're traveling at a constant velocity north, we do travel some distance. So this particular area underneath that line, between the line and the x-axis, represents a rectangle. It's base times height. So we have a height of 20 meters per second and a base of five. From five to 10 represents a change of five meters seconds. So 5 times 20 gives me 100 meters north, and it's above the x-axis, so this is northerly direction. So this is a constant velocity. From 10 to 15, we have a change of velocity of 20 meters per second. You can see we started at 20, and that section drops all the way down to zero. So there's a change in velocity of 20 meters per second. Again, it takes 5 seconds. 20 divided by 5. Now, this is no longer an increasing gradient. This is decreasing. So in a way, it's still a rise over run, but in a way, it's a fall over a run. Okay, so it's dropping 20 meters per second over five seconds. So on average, this has a gradient of negative four meters per second per second in the north direction, which can also be expressed as four meters per second per second in the southerly direction. 
Okay, the area underneath that particular section, again, it's a triangle, it's above the x-axis. So whilst we are slowing down, there is still a positive displacement. So that's got a displacement of that triangle, which is 50 meters to the north. In reference to the northerly direction, this is constant deceleration. From 15 to 20, we have a change of velocity from zero all the way down to minus 20. So there's a change of velocity of 20 meters per second, it takes five seconds. A gradient of negative four meters per second per second north, which can also be expressed as four meters per second per second south. Displacement, again, is the area. Now remember, it's the area between the line and the x-axis. So this represents an area underneath the x-axis. This is now 50 meters in a southerly direction. And relative to that south direction, this is constant acceleration. Finally, from 20 to 25, we have a constant velocity as shown by the green line. There's no change in velocity. Time duration is still five seconds. So constant velocity means that we have an acceleration of zero. There is displacement still. Um, it's going to be five seconds by 20 meters per second constantly. So that gives me a rectangle with an area of 100 meters. So this is traveling 100 meters. And again, this rectangle is underneath the x-axis. So we consider that displacement in the southerly direction. So that's constant velocity. In terms of distance, we travel 50 in the first five, 100 in the second, 50 in the third, 50 in the fourth, and 100 in the fifth. So in total, that's 350 meters traveled total for this particular graph. Now again, just a reminder, the areas above the x-axis represent the northerly displacement. So the green graph here represents total displacement in the northerly direction, 50 plus 100 plus 50 is 200 meters in the north. Now the yellow section below the x-axis that represents a negative north, or if you like, south. So that's 150 meters southerly. So let's add them up. We know that in total, we've got 200 meters displacement north and 150 displacement south. Which one's bigger? Well, the north is, and by how much? 50 meters. So we can rearrange that, and we know that displacement is 50 meters in the north. Scenario number two. Again, we have a visual of continual motion. However, we're breaking it up into sections to try and analyze it. So first of all, stage one, the car accelerates from a velocity of zero, that is stationary, to 20 meters per second south over a time of five seconds at a constant rate. So off it goes in the southerly direction, speeding up, as is shown in the red line. Stage two, the car maintains a constant velocity of 20 meters per second south for the next five seconds. So that maintains a constant velocity, which means there's a straight line at the negative 20 meters per second north reference. Stage three, the car decelerates from a velocity of 20 meters per second south to zero over the next 2.5 seconds at a constant rate. So it slows down, decelerating. Stage four, the car accelerates from the velocity of zero to 20 meters per second north over the next 2.5 seconds at a constant rate. And that's shown on the graph as well. Stage five, the car maintains a constant velocity of 20 meters per second north for the next five seconds. Here's our straight line on the graph. And finally, stage six, the car decelerates from a velocity of 20 meters per second north to zero over the next five seconds at a constant rate. So it's gonna slow down. So there's our graph for that particular motion. Let's now analyze it. The first section, we've got a change of velocity of 20 meters per second. It takes five seconds. So the average acceleration is the gradient, the rise over run. We can see from this particular graph that the rise is in fact a fall. It's dropped 20 meters per second and the run is five seconds. So to work out acceleration it is equal to change in velocity over time. We put that in and we find that the gradient is negative four meters per second per second to the north or we can express that as a positive value to the south. So our acceleration is four meters per second per second to the south. Our displacement of course is the area under the graph. It's a triangle. It's the area between the line and the x-axis. presents a negative displacement. So instead of north, this is south. So the area is half the base times the height and that comes out to 50 meters south. Description is we have a constant acceleration in the southerly direction. Now the next five seconds, we have no change in velocity. It's a constant velocity. It travels for five seconds. So the acceleration, the gradient is zero. So there is no acceleration. Displacement, however, while you're traveling at constant velocity, you are moving forward and displacing. This is going to be 100 meters south, as can be seen from the calculation of a base of five and a height of 20. The description there is that it's constant velocity in the southerly direction. Now we're gonna break this up into little sections. 10 to 12.5, we've got a change in velocity of 20 meters per second. You can see that we start at 20 meters per second south and we decelerate to zero, and that takes us to a time of 12.5. So the change in velocity is 20, Change in time is 2.5. That gives us a gradient of 20 divided by 2.5 is eight meters per second per second in the northerly direction. 
The displacement is a smaller triangle. It's a half of a base of 2.5 and a height of 20. That gives us a displacement of 25 meters south. Now that's constant deceleration from a south perspective. The next small section from 12 and a half to 15 seconds, we have a change in velocity again of 20. We start at zero and it climbs up to 20 meters per second in a northerly direction. It takes two and a half seconds to get there. That gives us a gradient 20 divided by 2.5 of eight meters per second per second in the northerly direction. That gives us a displacement of 25 meters north this time because our area is above the x-axis. And the description is we have constant acceleration in the northerly direction. From 15 to 20, we have no acceleration. There is no change in velocity. It's a constant velocity the whole time, as you can see from the graph. Change in time is five, so our gradient is zero over five or zero acceleration. Our displacement, however, we're still moving forward, so we're being displaced, and that gives us 100 meters north. That's constant velocity. And finally, the last section of the graph, we change our velocity by 20 meters per second. We started at 20 meters per second north and we've dropped it back down to zero. We've decelerated, it takes five seconds to do so. Negative 20 divided by five gives me an acceleration of negative four meters per second per second in the northerly direction, which can be expressed as four meters per second per second southerly. The area under the graph for the final five seconds represents a displacement of 50 meters. Now this particular section is still above the x-axis and accordingly this displacement is 50 meters in the northerly direction. And from a northerly perspective, this is constant deceleration. Let's look at the distance. We've got 50 meters in the first section, 100 in the second, 25 in the next 2.5 seconds, another 25, another 100 and a final 50. So this gives us a total distance traveled of 350 meters. Now a reminder, when we are looking at areas underneath the x-axis, such as this yellow shape, we're talking about southerly displacements. Areas above the x-axis, such as this green section, are displacements in the northerly direction. So in terms of displacements here, we need to work out which one we've got more of and by how much. So we've got 175 meters of displacement south and another 175 meters of displacement north. So putting them together, they effectively cancel out. They give us a displacement of zero. This vehicle has traveled as far south as it has north. It's ended up being at exactly the same position it started at. Now it's your turn. I suggest you have a go at these particular questions, pausing the video as you go, trying yourself, and then checking my solutions. Sample question. Consider the following motion graph. Question number one, what's the total distance traveled? Pause the video and give it a go. The solution. Let's have a look. First of all, the first section from zero to 10 has the area of a triangle, and that gives us 500 meters. The second section is the same triangle that's been reflected in the vertical orientation. So it also is 500. Then a third 500 down below for the third section from 20 to 30 seconds. Finally, a rectangle, which has a height of 100 and a base of 10. 100 by 10 gives us a distance of 1000. And finally, we've got another fourth and final triangle of 500 meters. So in total, I've got 500, 500 for 1000, another 500, 1500, another 500 for 2000, and another 1,000 for 3,000 meters is our total distance travel. Question two, what's the total displacement? Pause now to work this question. Let's look at the solutions. Now to work out the displacement, we've got to subtract our north and south from one another. You can see from this yellow section, we've got 2,000 meters displaced south, and from the green section, we've got 1,000 meters displaced north. Now comparing the two, which one has a greater displacement? Of course, it's the southerly. And by how much is it greater? Well, it's a thousand meters greater in the south. So if we want to work that out, we can see that the answer is, of course, 1000 meters south is our total displacement. Question number three, when was the object traveling in a northerly direction? Pause now if you like. Well, the area above the x-axis tells us when it's northerly displacement for a velocity time graph. And clearly from that, we can see from zero to 20 seconds, this graph is above the x-axis. So this is the duration of northerly displacement. Question four, at what time did the object start traveling in a southerly direction? Pause now, work this out. Well, the section of the graph below the x-axis represents southerly displacement. So this is occurring from a time of 20 seconds to 50 seconds. However, the question says, at what time did the object start traveling in a southerly direction? This first occurred at a time of 20 seconds. Question five, when was the object stationary? This object was never stationary. The object is always in motion from zero to 50 seconds. Final question, question six, 
What was the object's average acceleration for the first 10 seconds? Pause if you like. If we look at this first 10 seconds, we can check out the rise over run. Starts at zero and it rises to 100 meters per second in the northerly direction. That's a rise of 100. And in terms of the run, that occurs over 10 seconds. So average acceleration equals the rise over run from a graph, which also equals the change in velocity over the change in time as an equation. That's 100 meters per second is our change in velocity, divided by 10 seconds is our change in time. Collectively, that gives me an average acceleration of 10 meters per second per second in a northerly direction. You've been watching a Juddy Productions video. If you've enjoyed and indeed learned something from this video, then please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.